So my name is Claire. I am the founder of Healing Ceilings. Let's start with our story and give you a bit of a background on who we are, why we exist, what the beginnings of Healing Ceilings was. So in 2015, I had brain and spine surgery for a condition called Chiari 1 malformation. Basically, in my situation, my prolapse was quite large, so they had to remove some skull, remove some spine, so that um, my cerebral spinal fluid could feed my body properly. At that stage, my, I just had my third baby and her delivery revealed the fact that something was wrong. So she was five months old when I was diagnosed and nine months old when I had surgery. Um, it's been six years of recovery and I, I say recovery still because I have a new normal. It's not what my old normal was. Um, I have systems in place to face some of the, the new normal. Um, but I think I'm still strengthening and still slowly healing. So I'm a success story, absolutely success story. That's why I have the capacity and the drive right now to go and pursue this for future patients. So basically, when I was going through the, the basically the tests, the scans, the everything else, there was a lot of time that I had to sit there by myself um, waiting for my appointments. Um, but then not only that, when you're sitting there by yourself, now this is before COVID, so the isolation that I experienced, I imagine it would be quite a lot more now, um, is while I was sitting there, like you left to your own thoughts, you left to your own devices, you know, whether it be waiting for a test or a diagnosis or whatever, you, you're sitting there and you're thinking about your situation. And so most of that time I would notice the white ceilings. Uh, and then when I had my surgery, obviously again recovery, there were more tests and eventually I had a fourth baby. I was given permission for the fourth baby, but then my body decided that it wasn't going to be the brain that was going to give up, but my heart and my lungs decided to play some games. So every second week I was in hospital and pretty much had needles every second week for some kind of blood test. Um, and again, this meant that that nemesis of white tiles and white ceilings in general just continued to, to grow. Um, when I was in one of the triage rooms, so we're waiting in our wheelchair, waiting for our turn to go for our scan, um, there was a bed with a lady coming through and she had obviously been there for a while. And her, I noticed that like, she was very unwell and her head was kind of like, a jar to one side and in that moment I had such a clear perspective and I realized hang on I can see the whole ceiling but she can only see one tile and in that moment I knew that something had to change but I wasn't well enough to think about what the change would be um, but I did recognize that you know I, I don't know how unwell she was but let's say that was a deathbed if she was there and a white ceiling was the last thing that she saw in those moments of great need that's horrific so this is why I want to bring color and beauty into these spaces. Where we are right now is we have got 13 artists from four different states um, involved and all with the same vision to bring beauty and color into spaces that facilitate healing. So whether that be just general GPs or medical practices, medical clinics, hospitals, whatever it might be, that is our common vision, our common goal. So that lady in that bed was one of the reasons why I think over the years, as I've gotten stronger and my capacity has gotten larger, um, I've been able to pursue this idea. The second lady that came, I came across, she was in, uh, after I'd come out of ICU, we were the ward that I was in, um, I needed to relearn how to swallow and walk and all the rest. But when I was able to walk to the bathroom, I'd pass this lady's bed and I would ask her how she was. I mean, it wasn't big conversations, it was like two minutes long because the reality of the situation is we're both very unwell. And she would like shake her fist, oh, I wanna get out, I wanna get out, I'm in jail, I'm in jail. All I want to do is see the sun. So I got my husband to bring in a uh, colored A4 piece of paper and he stuck it on the wall and there was this dramatic change in her demeanor. Like she wasn't healed, but there was a soothing of soul. Like she just settled. and. In that moment too, I realized, hang on, there's power in color, there's power in an image. Um, so, as I got stronger, I, well, sorry, once I left the hospital, I started to paint. I didn't know that I was using artist therapy or art to heal, I didn't know that was a thing, but I did, I started painting, um, it kind of distracted me from my pain, definitely very therapeutic, obviously. 
over time people asked to purchase my work so eventually it got into retail so I think it was like three years in I realized hang on if my work's in retail maybe I'm an artist you know <laughs> and I do have a design background so I actually studied product design so as I recognized that I was an artist as I took this nemesis of white tiles I wanted to marry art and medicine and therefore bring in my product design background and just take what is already existing which in most hospitals is the inserted ceiling tiles and use them as a blank canvas to bring the color into these spaces like the benefit of all of the tiles is that they're out of the way but there are this subtle color for a space there's subtle beauty in a space that's not overpowering or anything it's just subtle design out of the way easy to install obviously like i said as i got a bit stronger then i've now pursued uh, healing ceilings which is ceiling art for medical spaces and hospitals bring beauty and color into these spaces and that is to bring either a positive distraction to patients something for patients just to look at hopefully it's something soothing we'll choose colors that are soothing for the patient generally um, like if you if you chose any of our photographs nature scenes are obviously quite peaceful pastels are quite peaceful but i mean again back to that lady that her head was ajar i just think instead of seeing a white tile i'm sure she would have enjoyed seeing a beach scene or flowers or painted water drop droplets you know it's something that uh, kids in school if they have a little bit too much energy you know they're given like those fidget spinners or those poppets and the idea there is obviously to distract them from this excess energy and just to use that energy and even the thought process to to focus your thought processes on something else and i feel like um art does the same thing so let's say one of one of our artists she is an oil painter she paints water and in one of it, it one of her designs there's like you can see the light going through it imagine sitting there and looking at this piece and you could get lost in the pathways of the light touching the water and spreading through the water you could count the droplets you know it's in that moment it's a slight distraction but it, in that moment you are removed from the fact that you're sitting waiting for a diagnosis so that's basically the history of healing ceilings that's the heart of healing i hope that it is something that is of interest and um, something that you see is of value and like i said i really believe in it as a patient uh, and i hope to bring more color to more hospitals all across australia